In this video, I'll demonstrate how to add a new geostring. This will be the first part of a two-part series. In this portion of the demonstration, I'll review some of the basic settings of a geostring. In the second part, I'll discuss some of the more advanced settings. Let's begin by tapping the plus icon to add a new geostring. A geostring has two essential components. The first one is a title that describes the task. In this case, we'll say pick up grocery items. The second essential component is the location or locations of the task. In some cases, you may only have one location for any given task. However, I think you'll find that in many instances, you'll want to set up a geostring with multiple locations. So if you reach any of those locations, the geostring reminder will pop up. For our grocery example, I may not care which grocery store I pick up these items at. I just want to be reminded the next time I drive by any of my favorite grocery stores. Before we get into adding a location, there is another option you can select. By tapping this notepad icon, you can enter in more details concerning the task. In my grocery example, I may list all the items I need to pick up, such as AA batteries, shaving cream, peanut butter, and maybe bananas. Now I can swipe backwards in the gesture area to go back to our Add Geostring screen. So now when I drive up to one of my favorite grocery stores, a reminder will pop up and I can stop at the store and pull up my shopping list. So let's add a few locations to our geostring. The first way we can do this is via a local business search. And this is the icon for that. When I bring up the screen, you'll notice that the city and state are filled in automatically based upon your current GPS position. I can enter in either a specific business such as Walmart or a general category name such as grocery store. So let's first type in Walmart and we're going to tap search. And it's going to display all of the Walmarts within my general vicinity. So let's say I change my mind and decide I want to search for grocery stores. So I can start on I can tap on start a new search. I can click on the business name field and I can type in grocery store. And it's going to find all the grocery stores in my local area. And I can choose multiple locations at the same time. So maybe I like Hancock and I like Safeway and maybe I like the Coconut Hill Indian Grocery. So I can also um, tap one of the star icons to uh, save it to my favorites list. So if Hancock is, is, a, is a place that I'm going to be doing a lot of geostrings at, I may save it as a favorite and I can quickly access that on my favorites list. To add the selected locations to the geostring, I simply swipe backwards in the, in the gesture area. Now, anytime I drive by any of those locations, I'm going to be alerted, whether it be Hancock, Safeway, or Coconut Hill Indian Grocery. If I want to change the name of one of these locations, perhaps instead of Hancock Supermarket, I just want to say Hancock, I can go ahead and edit that and hit save. And it's going to save, save that location name. Maybe I'll do that for Coconut Hill too. Also, if I wanted to view a map or get directions to one of these locations, I could tap on the map icon. And it's going to bring up Google Maps at that location. To get directions, I can tap the results, tap on the location, and, and tap directions to here. And it's going to get from my current location to Hancock. And where this might be um, beneficial is if you're out of town and you're trying to stop at a grocery store and you choose some of the local grocery stores in the area, but you don't know where they are necessarily. So when you get close to your current location, you can pull up your geostring from the reminder pop-up and pull up the directions. And I could get a turn-by-turn -turn directions on here as well as viewing the directions on a map. So that'll be helpful in, those, in that situation. Let me go ahead and delete some of these geostrings to make room for some other ones or delete some of the locations. The second way that you can add a location is by entering in an address or an intersection by tapping this icon. First, I type in a description for the location. So in this case, I'm going to type in White House. So let's go ahead and type in the address of the White House right here. And I can type in a, an intersection as well. I could type in something like made and first. So if I want if I wanted to be reminded around the general vicinity of a particular intersection, I could do that. But in this example, I'm going to type in a specific address, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, which is in Washington, 
DC. And I'm going to go ahead and swipe backwards on the gesture area, and that's going to save the location to my geostring. I can also add a current location to um, the geostring by tapping on the, the bullseye icon. And let's go ahead and do that. And it's retrieving my current location via GPS. And now once it's retrieved it, I need to add a description um, to the location. And I'm going to call this home because that's where I am right now. And I'm going to save this as a favorite. And again, I, I, in another video, I'm going to show you location management. And I'm going to show you how you can view your favorites. So let me go ahead and swipe backwards in the gesture area. And I'm going to add home to my current geostring. Um, let me go ahead and delete those. Um, the other way you can add locations is via your contact list. So, for instance, if I'm visiting someone and want to remember to ask them something when I get there, I could choose to add that location to my geostring. And that's, of course, assuming that they have an address specified in their contact information. So, let's go ahead and tap that. I have two contacts right now. Actually, I have three contacts right now. Um, let's go ahead and add Barack Obama because I have his address stored in there. And his address is, of course, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue at the White House. Um, let me go ahead and go back here. I have this one right here, which has no name available. And what it does is it just lets you know that it adds the address, but it lets you know that there's no contact name available. So there's, there's a lot of error checking in the application, uh, which I'm demonstrating here. Another, another uh, error that we look for is whether or not there's a, an address saved in the contact. So Barbara Walters does not have any addresses saved in her contact. And it's going to let me know that this contact does not have any saved addresses. So I can't add her to my geostring. Um, let me go ahead and delete those. Now, the fifth way you can add um, locations is by tapping on the star icon. And what you can do is choose a location from either your favorite locations, which we saved before. If you remember, Hankook, Home, and Walmart were our favorite locations. Actually, Walmart was a favorite location I saved before this demonstration. Also, you have location history, which is all the locations you've ever been to using geostrings. If you remember, I added this contact. I added um, the White House, and I added home. And you'll notice that the White House and Barack Obama are not on this list because it knows that they're at the same coordinates, and it's only going to save one entry for every um, GPS coordinate. So you're not going to have duplicate entries. So if you don't remember that you've saved um, Safeway into your location history, it knows for you. Geostrings thinks for you. So if you do it again, you're not going to have 10 Safeways in here. You're going to have just one Safeway in here. So let me go ahead and select Safeway, since I was talking about it, and I'll add that to my Geostring. I can also add one of my favorites if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and add a Hankook. And let me go ahead and add Walmart as well. And what I'm going to demonstrate, these are all places where you can get groceries. Um, it would be nice if I didn't have to do this every single time, even though that's that was very quick and easy to add three locations from my favorites and history list. It'd be nice if I could do it in one easy step. So let me go ahead and tap this icon. And I can select Save as Location Group. Now, let me save this as grocery stores. You notice it's been saved as a location group. Now, let me go ahead and delete them from this geostring. And now let me demonstrate to you how I can add all three in one easy step. I can go to location groups. I can go to grocery store. And now they've been added in one, one easy step. You'll find as you start using the app more and more that you're going to be migrating away from the first four options of adding locations to the fifth one because that's that's really the the easiest way to add um, locations to a geostring and it's one of the really nice features in geostrings since geostrings saves your locations automatically as you reference them in your geostrings uh, so the next time you need to perform a task at a location instead of searching for it all over again using a business search or an address input you can bring it up in your save location list. So let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and add the, the locations back. And I'm going to go ahead and save the geostring as it is right now. In the next video, we'll edit this geostring and talk about the more advanced customization options. 
To save a geostream, you can either tap on the save icon in the top left corner of the screen or swipe backwards in the gesture area. And now this geostream has been saved. So in my next video, I'll discuss the more advanced geostream configuration options.